Well, welcome back from that break. And right now, I'm being joined by the CEO of Love Work Media by name of Diane Bali. Joins me in the studio. A very good morning, sir. Thank you. How are you? Bella. <laughs> <Miss> you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, sorry. Yeah. Oh. All, All right. right. Uh, sorry, <coughs> apologies for that. Yeah. How have you been? How, how was the weekend? Thank God for the weekend and uh, quite a while. I've not been around uh, okay. captain, uh, with the captain family. Right. So uh, I'm so pleased coming back of today. Of course. We are yeah. glad to have you join us yeah. this morning. <laughs> Welcome. Thank Let me you. begin with this headline that says... <coughs> PDP vows legal challenge as APC clears Kaduna, Kogi, local governments. And you know, before we get on, we got on air, I was asking, what has our uh, election become in this country? Because it's not looking like uh, any, any, any state that is uh, uh, majorly, you know, uh, owned by the party, whether the PDP, now seems to be clearing all that. So are we really conducting an election in this country or we are just, we are, we are just making election a child's play in this country? Well, you know that uh, it's been a recurring decimal that mm. actually we're witnessing this thing uh, under uh, the leadership of PDP. Okay. Every state where your governor uh, is a sitting governor, mm. automatically the, in <coughs> the state electoral uh, commission mm. become answerable to him. Okay. Budgets are made from public funds mm. only to energize, empower a state independent that is not independent though, okay. <laughs> uh, electoral commission. Mm. And one is at lost whether we realize the implication of using public fund to uh, invest on sham like uh, the local government election we mm. claim now that we are conducting. Mm. People are meant to buy forms from the State Independent Electoral Commission. Okay. Aspirants from different parties will buy their forms and pay. Of course, the state. Uh, governor will also sponsor uh, his own men. So it's like the instruction is clear to the chairman of the State Independent Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. This is not going to be election. You are going to return six and so number of people to me that are all members of my party. Mm. Therefore, if you like, uh, score the highest score during the local government election. Mm. If you like, be the most popular uh, candidate that uh, the, the, the electorate are rooting for. Mm. If you like, uh, let your own uh, electoral structure mm. be uh, more expansive than that of the governor. You ain't going anywhere. Only the list that was sent to the State Independent Electoral Commission would be recycled and brought back to the governor job done mm. then of course he will pay them handsomely for a work well done <laughs> don't forget that these people that are members of the state independent electoral commission mm. are still uh, citizens mm. of that state mm. who are supposed to be thinking of how they can contribute towards a better society mm. and some of them are uh, highly placed individual before they were appointed as state chairman and so on and so forth. Okay. You ask yourself, who actually is responsible for the predicament that is the lot of Nigerians today? Okay. Can't we see that uh, all of us are to be blamed one way or the other? Mm. You were complaining about the way a governor or maybe of APP or mm. whichever party was returning uh, 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 candidates of his party. Mm. You complain, you grumble. But when you are in a position to change uh, the status quo, you continue to sustain it. So that is the situation we find ourselves in this country. Mm. There is nothing like democracy, especially at the grassroots level, where we are supposed to have the people's voice, the people's representation, the people's choice. It's no longer like that. Everything has been cowed under the influence of the governor, mm. whether he like it or not. All right. Well, 
uh, the part where you say the this is no democracy. All right, viewers, uh, a gentle reminder that our phone lines are now open for you to call in to join the conversation. I am I, I, I am forced to ask in a in a country or nation where we say we practice democracy, is this really democracy playing out? Because now we don't even know if for uh, some persons made the, this uh, made uh, saw this coming and say that. Uh, this local government election is into the, uh, the state governors are in a way going to hijack it. And uh, we've seen what played out in Edo election. We've seen the, uh, what played out in uh, Benue. And now this is playing out. But at the end of the day, when you, uh, the question with the judiciary is uh, now you go to the courts, you go to court with these cases. And at the end of the day, it doesn't see the light of the day. Well, where are we headed to? Should we blame this on the judiciary or should we blame the INEC? entirely obviously this is not how democracy work in a democratic government yeah, uh, so uh, <laughs> do you think <laughs> we do you, where do you think we should start from you know san you uh, see, the sanitization you see i have my attitude when public criticism goes out against one agency or institution of government or the other okay i usually see it this way differently from how the public views it mm. anyway mm. where are those appointees or representative are from are they not from the society they are so before they become whatever they become they were with us mm. they were grumbling okay. they didn't like what was happening mm -hmm. they were among those who were complaining Con condemning desiring them. a change all right but here we are when they are brought on board, mm. they observe table manner. Mm. <laughs> and so, those things they were criticizing... And what is the table manner? Well, you don't bite the... Finger uh, that feeds finger you. That, <laughs> especially, not only the face, but it's feeding you. Oh, exactly. You know, <laughs> you know, that would be very dangerous. So, they do this at all levels. All right. Now, if you single out one agency or one institution mm -hmm. uh, uh the democratic institution mm -hmm. uh to, to 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 point accusing finger on it mm -hmm. what of the others mm -hmm. so the truth is we must tell ourselves this that we are the architects of our own woes mm -hmm. there was no semblance of people's uh power how we revolted mm -hmm. how we all stood up against uh, engineering of the corruption that has eaten deep into our fabric so much so that you can no longer trust an institution like the judiciary okay this is quite frightening in the developed uh, democracy mm -hmm. you I, I once read a book um, the american uh, Supreme Court in the Making of Democracy. I think okay. that's the title of that book. Mm. You discover that because the Supreme Court put their feet down to say this is the just uh, the course of justice we must follow. Things began to work at a certain stage. Mm. But here we have a judiciary that the 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 the, the, the main that's supposed to be honorable men. Okay. I wouldn't say have mortgaged their conscience, mm. but are also observing good table manner too. Mm. Because they, at a certain level in their appointment, they begin to see nothing, uh, see no evil, mm. uh, hear no evil. And say no evil. And say no evil. So, this is the predicament we found ourselves. And you ask me, who should be blamed i say all of us until we stop this blame gate tinibu did that obasanjo didn't do that what did you do mm. we want a change we want good leaders this bad ones but you just said it you said uh, you, uh, I, I, I remember before you began your speech you said <laughs> you shouldn't buy the finger that fits you oh and it's still feeding you so <laughs> you so w w if we begin to uh, if we continue in that train, uh, that train, that since the re we ha we have been settled, mm. therefore the masses can go to hell. But do you think do you do you see this being achievable? 
knowing that uh, the saying, just like you say, you don't bite the finger that fits you or it's feeding you. Yes. Do you say? Do you do you see corruption? Do you think it is achievable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, um, here again we bring in the role of leadership. Uh, you know, when the good book, I think it's Proverbs that said, when the righteous are in authority, mm -hmm. the people rejoice. Okay. You see. Although I situate the blame on all of us, the public, mm. you discover that when the masses, the multitude, okay. have a leader mm. who knows where he is going mm. and what, what he wants, the good that he wants mm. for, the, uh, for the entire people, mm. and he demonstrates that he knows where he is leading the people to, mm. and that all that he is dedicating his uh, the crusade to okay. mm. is to bring the best for the people and the people can feel the sincerity the honesty mm. of his uh, 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 leadership mm. they will begin to adjust and you will discover that we would have uh, a new orientation okay. because all of these things begins with a orientation mm. over over the uh, many years we have been struggling to be a nation mm. of uh, of record mm. we have injured ourselves we've hurt ourselves so much that uh, everybody is now uh, behaving as i must survive exactly. um, we. Uh, my, my tribe must survive mm. even if it means matching against the other tribes who cares mm. it's just that my tribe must. it must be mm. you know so why we found ourselves boxed into a situation where we now struggle to live mm -hmm. we, we struggle to exist mm. so the consequences of this situation we found ourselves is that it's impacting negatively on the nigerian psyche okay. so the way they are responding mm. spoiling the things that are supposed to be a common asset People can vandalize uh, the, 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 the electric, electricity poor, thereby depriving themselves of electricity. <laughs> it is well. Well, let's quickly hear what the scholar have got to say before we move on. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Thank Glad. You. And you in the studio. Glad to have you join us on the press. Your name and where you're calling us from. Please, you have just 60 yeah. seconds. We are speaking to Shamati from Akonga Nasirati. Okay. All right, please go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, I, I disagree with that gentleman in the studio saying we should not blame our leaders. Okay. You must have, you must have to be accounted for. Mm. If you are a husband mm. and you have a family mm. and you shall not do the right thing, who is the family who will be blamed? Okay. The husband will be blamed by the family because mm. he's in charge of the house. Okay. So, was that how people who came in this country? You must have been blamed for. Mm. So, you must be accounted for. Okay. He's not doing the right thing, we'll tell you too. So I disagree what he said. Our oh, leader will be accounted for whatever they did. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your contribution and have yourself a wonderful day. All right, uh, I was going to ask, uh, you know, you talked about change and uh, change starts from all of us. If we want to make a change, it's not just about the government. But don't you, let's look at it from this angle. Uh, the executive, if the if this change must begin or must start, don't you think it starts from the executive? Well, uh, the, 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 I've said it all. The executives are not human, made outside the society. They are the creation of the society. Mm. They are people, individuals, who populates the executive, mm. whose action or inaction mm. is predicated by uh, what they have come to value. Now, where there is no, when we have no value, mm. the society does not have value. Where are they going to pinch their, uh, pinch their action? Mm. So, whether it's executive or the legislature or the judiciary, mm. the change must come through a revolution. It must come, it, it must be far sweeping. If you begin to sec sec sectorize it, mm. Say, so let's deal with the judiciary. Uh, maybe in two years' time, we'll deal with the executive and so on. Mm. You still not get it. The problem has become so complex because 
once a religion or ethnic ethnicity is introduced into a thing in Nigeria, mm. you see that it has we are we are going to miss focus because so much emphasis will be laid on the wrong premise. Okay. So yes, executive have so much so, so much to account for. Okay. They have so much because they are like alpha and omega mm. the whole thing begins with executive and ends with the executive exactly. in fact it is the executive that now rules and controls the legislature so you and i can see exactly so it is to the extent that they leave the uh, legislature the jag uh, jagula, uh, j that uh, the legislature will be able to uh, perform independently but here we find that both the executive and the judiciary is under the Sorry, both the legislature and the uh, judiciary are in the pocket of the executive. executive. <laughs> I love that part. Well, mm. let's talk about the uh, grid collapse. This headline here says grid collapse is 105 times in 10 years, despite $1.4 billion loan. And now I remember uh, in uh, under President Mohamed Buhari, that's the former president, it collapsed about 93 times. And under this administration that is barely two years in office, it has collapsed uh, 12 times. And this is, uh, this is an administration that said it is uh, working so hard to, uh, uh, you know, uh, make the, make, uh, what is it called, fix what has been broken in the past governments. Now, with what is happening with this power collapse, despite 1.4 billion US dollars, <laughs> are you, do you, <laughs> do you believe in these policies and the renewed hope agenda of this administration? Of course, that of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu. <laughs> are we seeing like at the end of the tunnel as it is going? Well, I have watched for more than one year the style of our Mr. President, I've also listened to his critics, mm. especially the constructive ones. I felt the pulse of the people that he's leading mm. and their thoughts concerning their leader. Okay. And then I have come to conclude that hope that is deferred. Mm makes the bone sick exactly. it would have been wrong for uh, the president to promise hope mm -hmm. when there would be no games of hope mm. within the present of the activities of government mm. could have been any other mantra that he wants to guide his administration but mm. hope should not be there it is even worse when you say it's renewed. Mm. What was the catalyst that brought about this renewal? Mm -hmm. Why is it that the people are not witnessing or feeling it? Exactly. So let's say that if we are pursuing um, renewed hope as an agenda, we have failed woefully. We failed but that's, woefully. Not the, that's not just the uh, bad news. The bad news mm. is that by the way and the steps the administration has taken so far anyone that is hoping that there will be light at, at the, the end, end of, of the, the tunnel, tunnel should convince the people by showing a little of the light exactly. in the middle of the tunnel at least then quench it and until they get to the go end to the <laughs> end you know and wait so the uh, one of the analysts puts it this way do not hope that the president Tinibu's administration mm. has any hope for Nigeria. All right. Now, uh, the import duty. We woke up to uh, the headline that says federal government zero uh, food import policy faces fresh hundreds. And uh, now I saw in the paper where people who import uh, like the vehicles. Uh, now we are talking now because uh, uh, the government said they are working in uh, renewing hope and uh, taking some policies. Policies that are being taken both uh, when we look at our economy, economically, the economy is crashing. I was coming to work this morning and uh, as early as it was, people were barely on the road. 
uh, there is power collapse and there is high rate of our custom in importation. Now I ask again, it still boils down to the question of how much progress are we making in this country economically? Yeah, you see, the indices to measure progress um, I have not been put in place by this administration. Mm. There should be uh, a measurable progress, a measurable achievement. You know, say we, we, we promise the people A, B, C, D. Mm. And then, of course, after our first year, mm. we have been able to take so and so steps. So far, mm. we are going into second year. So we hope to take so and so uh, area, you know, mm. so that at the end of the day, uh, the people who listen to you will be able to measure how much you have advanced in your promises. Mm. That is why so many Nigerians uh, 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 criticizes uh, the presidential uh, president's speech at certain occasion, including they just concluded uh, independence uh, speech. Mm. It, people feel that it is too fallow that you cannot find anything concrete to pin down as what the president has said mm. or is saying or would want to say. Mm. The president addresses issues as though there is no plan. He has no plan. It's just that empty promises. Mm. And uh, when he mentioned last time uh, in his uh, independence speech of what one would have loved to call progress in the of his administration mm. economically, Economical. people came out to refute it and said, look, what you, are, you, they are, you have given us is false. <laughs> we have nothing like that at all. Okay. And um, a situation where the only good judges uh, about our economy are uh, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank. Mm. They are the ones that are telling us what uh, the, 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 the good side of our economy. And, and the, the people are not feeling the impact. Professionals and the technical men yeah, that are within the, the, the Nigerian community mm. who should be able to say, uh, report back uh, a sort of uh, place a feedback mechanism mm. have not been able to do that because there is they have nothing there is no offering from where they can now establish the a parameter to measure what we are achieving mm. so the whole economy is in shambles because we are is being run by aboros so <laughs> to speak and it is quite pathetic because uh, with the type of economy that he inherited, I mean, the president inherited from his predecessor, mm. one should have hoped that uh, uh, the, the man understand the enormity of the work that is before him mm. so that he can assemble the best brain mm. to tackle the challenges ahead. Mm. But he went ahead to bring in his political associates who, uh, like many have said, became the square peg in a round hole. Mm. So that is why uh, until he uh, starts again, he must dismantle mm. what he's doing to begin again if he is really, if he meant well mm. for the country, you know. But from all indication, apart from being old and uh, the energy uh, is, is, is sapped, you know, already, mm. uh, you see that his team, his team has not shown visible proof that they know what they were called to do. All right. <laughs> we have got to hear from this caller. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Please, can you move away from your eyes so I can hear you clearly? I'll turn down the volume of your TV set. But I still, you might have to call us back. Sorry. Uh, no, there is no news. We all can see and feel it that the economy is crashing day by day due to policies being taken by the current administration. Of late, we have the, uh, the report of uh, 
192 now 129 million nigerians living below poverty now in a country where uh with over uh, with 200 million nigerians 129 are living below poverty again world bank has come out to say that uh, it would take nigerians 15 minimum of 10 to 15 years to recover from the economic uh, economic damage that has been caused okay now the poli these policies are not working in favor of the citizen things are hard how do you think we are going to make headways looking at the fact that these policies has brought about businesses crashing which has led to economic uh, downgrading and the rest of it how do you think we are going to get out of this situation because whether we be whether we like it or not nigeria according to the former president is the only country we have got and though we all collectively should in a way or the other make it work what do you think is the way out of it because day by day our economy is going down yeah the the people still owns the power notwithstanding how does the people own the power yeah you know it, in a government that doesn't listen to the plight of the people that doesn't you know respect the right of the people uh we s we've seen several protests of course we don't we can't even say okay this is what you you, you, you the the truth is that you can take whatever belongs to a child and lift your hands up so high that the child's hand will not reach there mm. But something would happen at a certain uh, stage. Mm. Even the hand that you lifted up so that the child may not be able to uh, uh, grab what is his own. Mm. At this stage, you, it, it, it becomes very hurtful. Mm. It pains. So you want to bring your hands down. Okay. Not because the child has succeeded in pulling your hands down, mm. but because there is no energy to sustain the hand that you raised Lifted. up. That is how it also work with uh, when you uh, you have a, a, a debtor, you know, you blocked his house so early and say he's not going to anywhere until he pays you. And your debtor say, I'm not go uh, I don't have money to pay you. If you will allow me to go out and shop and look for money, mm. I'll certainly pay you. Pay. Say, no, you are not living here. And he decide to stay back meanwhile you you are not going anywhere mm. because your debtor is going nowhere mm -hmm. that is what the government would find out one day they can't explain how it happens mm. but they would know that yes something beyond what we were planning mm. they have finished their scheming mm. they have ratified it and felt that it is uh, proven therefore it's going to work mm. but one day it will collapse on the government the people will take back that which is theirs and they must take it back by and by how with what strategy mm -hmm. i don't know but uh, 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 as they say a hungry man is an angry, is an angry man. man at a stage when the hunger can no longer can no longer be be, uh, uh, be accommodated the people will revolt. Okay, but we know that the only way of uh, making these changes is, uh, you know, electing good leaders, competent leaders. But when you look at uh, the way election go and is going in this country, we don't know. We can't even hold INEC accountable, nor the judiciary. So, how, 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 what miracle is going to happen for us to, uh, you know, be able to elect good leaders who we uh, put this economy and our country, Nigeria, in a uh, uh, as a whole in a good shape well here again i know that we have come to a stage where you don't need to tell uh the blind man that the 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 the, the, the weather is cloudy mm. anyone that is not feeling it and on his skin is seeing it with his eyes mm -hmm. anyone that is not seeing it with his eyes hearing it with his ears you can smell it everywhere now like as i keep saying there must be a revolution 
Why this revolution has been delayed is because the, the, both the uh, colonial masters mm. and their successors that are now Nigerians like you and I su have succeeded in uh, dividing us along ethnic and religious line. Mm. So it's been difficult to come together and agree on what should be a popular action to take by the people. Mm. But be that as it may, who would have believed that what has become uh, obedient movement mm. was in the offing, especially given the reality about the status of uh, uh, our parties as at of that time. Mm. No one would believe that uh, a candidate can walk through a party that is uh, virtually unknown, mm. you know, and spring and a surprise. Yes. You know, no one, even the man that actually became a beneficiary of that movement, mm. he probably did not know that the magnitude this little movement is going to generate mm. will be up to that level. Yes. So, after obedient, what next? I don't know. But since people could pull such surprises and say, to hell with your tribe, to hell with your religion, your we person. are looking for someone that can carry the challenge that is before us. And that's uh, the obedient one. So are you in a way saying that Obi would have been a better person? In, what, in terms of what? Governance and leadership. Of course. You see, one of our greatest on making in this country is that we take people that has no track record. Okay. And they give them responsibilities that far outweighs their capacity. Mm -hmm. Responsibilities that they were not trained for. Responsibilities that they have no technical idea on how to execute. Obi has been a successful businessman, a trader at that. But our President Bola Metunubu has been a, one, uh, has been a go former governor of his state. And <laughs> as such, we, that is why some persons who voted, that some persons believe that he has got everything it takes. Being a former governor, being uh, so many things. Which like governor uh, in the history of Nigeria, mm. which governor? Take it back as long as 1999 mm. and come up from there. Mm. Which governor has exhibited proficiency, efficiency, capability, mm. capacity in the discharge of his public assignment as a governor? Which one? Mm. Not even him as governor performed creditably uh, at Lagos, even though we come out here and make political statement a lot of people believe he you know you know uh he 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 he, uh, he made a lot of changes in lagos like uh, the face of the lagos we know now or we are seeing now it uh, was achieved by him <laughs> are you i i you i don't want you to, disagree, in, you I don't want to take myself into such unfounded debate or a debate that does not have uh, a springboard Okay. You know, I don't mm. want to go there. There must be a basis for whatever measurement that you want to take. Mm. But here, you are trying to build on s something on nothing. It cannot work. Mm. We, we are saying this, and it is very, very important. Nigeria has been very unfortunate mm. to be led, not only the governors, but also at the presidential level. Okay. Who's, who, who have led Nigeria with a, a prerequisite experience they want to engage you as a minister uh, as a, a public a civil servant they'll tell you the standard they are looking for mm -hmm. but here when it comes to political appointment we have no standard school certificate goes <laughs> all right mm -hmm. uh, our own president uh, disputes over his certificate uh, is still raging mm -hmm. whether is uh, the one that you obtain Overseas, we have not even found the one that you obtained locally. Okay. So, w where do we grade him in reality? Mm. Do, do, do we say, yes, this man was a graduate of the University of Ibadan or where? Mm. 
So we have not had people with track record of performance mm. in the place of in our uh, positions <laughs> of leadership. Well, and so far, it will be her as well. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to have you join us My on name the is show. Henry. Henry, from where? Yes, from Owerri. All right, please, your, go ahead with your contribution. In fact, thank you, Captain. You've been doing your best, and we've been listening. Mm. But the truth is that we in Nigeria don't face the truth. Okay. Most times, we know the truth, but we don't face it. Okay. It's just like a person on the screen. He is saying the truth, but he wouldn't accept it. Okay. There has never been a time in the history of rulership in this country that a scheme has been produced that would select who is going to be a governor, who is going to be a president. Okay. These people that come in the name of governorship, no, 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 no. They don't have credibility, sorry mm. to say. Okay. They come to empty the post. Mm. Each person from the governorship down the line. Mm. All their interest is not service. Interest is how many plots of land they will see, mm. how many either in the country or outside. Billions mm. of dollars mm. emptied out of this country. If from 1999 that our presidents, our governors, our representatives are keen about our interest, mm. this country should have been better than London. Mm. But what are they doing? Mm. Each person is thinking of billions of dollars they carry out of the country. Mm. The president they are talking about, you know that he is not qualified. Mm. The records you are talking about, do you know how many accounts he has? Do you, do you know how the history? Mm. You have the history. And we, the, the area we realized the importance of telling these people they, they are real worth. Mm. They can exist. In fact, in fact, there's no point talking because we all know the truth. Yeah. Until we say the truth, we cannot get it. All right. Sorry, let me get go back a little. You discuss sometimes somebody came here and discussed about them due to uh, comfort or something like that. Look mm. at that kind of thing. What are you talking about? We had the comfort uh, president um, Jonathan mm. did. You know, about ten billion or fourteen billion of dollars we mm. have. In fact, the wind. Please round up with your contribution. Yes, yes, yes. But sometimes we don't realize it. The youth come from what is he going to produce? All right. Is that our problem? Mm. Problem is to address what we have on ground. All right. Please, you know this. All right. Thank you very the much for your contribution. Climate, sorry, I am I'm true and true. But the minimum wage, how many years? How many months will it stay? Mm. I prepare people telling them. We are, we are doing conference. We are doing this. All this is our work. Look at this. This is November. We are going well, to thank you very much for your contribution. I will have to let you go so that others, others can engage in the conversation. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Oh, glad to have you join us. Your name and where you're calling us from. Please, you have 60 yes. seconds. Yes, yeah, so good morning. Uh, my name is Hans Pekwari. I'm calling you from Potako. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like your program and... Uh, uh, the man you are that is on screen now that you are interviewing is mm -hmm. telling us what in this country, and uh, I think we need more men like mm -hmm. that okay. in this country. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, I think, yes, I think that should be my contribution. All right, thank you, you very much for your. Yeah, my, thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, and have yourself a lovely day ahead. So, let's, uh, let's talk about out of school children. According to reports, 20 million we have, Nigerian has recorded. 20 million out of school children and we know let's uh, take it back to uh according to nelson mandela education is the greatest weapon which can be used to fight uh, uh a, a nation can use to fight poverty and the rest of it but as of today we are we have 20 million children out of school and according to uh, the former president of uh, uh, nigeria uh, uh, Basanjo, he said this is a recruitment for Boko Haram and the rest of it. <laughs> what do you make out of it, please, before we round up? It's unfortunate that uh, those who benefited from concerted effort to give education to young men mm. in the past are heading government that 
under their watch, millions mm. and millions every year okay. are leaving the school or are missing the opportunity of being enrolled in school, by the way. When we talk of out of school, we refer to those who have been enrolled but probably could not continue maybe because their parents did not uh, uh, have a stable income mm. to sustain uh, paying of school fees and all that. Mm. Or the, the, the demand mm. at home has impoverished the families to the extent that they now use the, ch the children uh, for labor. But let's talk about what the government, you know, what uh, Nigerians or what the people tend to benefit from the government. Shouldn't school, at least, or let's say from base, uh, basic to secondary, shouldn't be, be uh, free? <laughs> at least, let, let's see, let it be uh, what the government, you know, has uh, is doing uh, in a way of solidarity or at least to, you know, uh, for the growth of the economy, shouldn't school be free at all levels of uh, uh, education? If I would ask without thinking, I say the free education that was uh, offered by the government of Western Nigeria mm. uh, under Awolowo mm. is the reason why Yoruba uh, ethnic group prospered ahead of others. Okay. So there is it is the best investment mm. for any government to have a tomorrow. For any country to have a tomorrow, mm. invest in education. In the children, there appears to be this uh, fallacy mm. to believe that if, if you develop infrastructural facility, you should be clapped for because you are a governor. Mm. So now opening of roads that were constructed with money of the public mm. attracts additional chieftaincy title to governors. <laughs> it makes the, uh, it commands the, uh, the students to close school for one day in honor of a governor <laughs> who's supposed to uh, be doing what he's doing, by the yes, way. Sir. So, but like I said, they are missing it because if you develop infrastructure without the development of the people that would use this infrastructure, mm. the, the grid, the national grid will keep falling. Collapsing. <laughs> it will keep collapsing because the, uh, the, the, the human factor that's supposed to sustain, bring in new technology that would so, uh, sustain the grid mm. are not there. Mm. They were not trained. They were no, no, no sufficient manpower. Mm. So, that is why no matter how much you develop your infrastructural facilities, mm. if you do not have a, 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 a human capital development mm. that balances it, it becomes an improper fraction. Exactly. It will collapse. It will. Well, thank you so much for being with me in the studio this morning. I really do appreciate your audience. Thank you so much. Well, viewers, these are, are the points where we call it a day on the press on Capital Television. Thank you very much for listening. And for those of you that we are unable to take your course, sincere apology. Some other time, you will be lucky to join the conversation. Keep watching Captain Television. I am Messi and Melite. Have the rest of the best of your day ahead. Bye.